Hey everybody, welcome to tip 93 in the series 101 tips to ACO promotional examination. As a reminder, my website code3firetrain.com has a lot of great free resources on there. Check it out if you haven't done so already. And this series is based on my latest book from Fire Engineering Books and Videos titled by the same name, available off their website as well as mine below. And I say latest book because I've also signed a contract with Fire Engineering Books and Videos for my second book through them. That'll be titled Courage Under Fire Leadership, hopefully available sometime in 2022. Hopefully. It takes a while to put this stuff together, but I'm looking forward to uh, having them do my Courage Under Fire Leadership. So very excited there. So tip 93. Think about this, let this soak in. We promote people, not resumes. I say that because when I was an entry-level firefighter candidate a number of years ago, when I was just starting out looking at a career in the fire service and you know, really brand new, I wasn't even a rookie yet. I was just sort of taking classes at Chabot College where I still teach up in Hayward and just sort of planning out how do I best become a firefighter? And at the time, in the early 90s, most departments were requiring either EMT or paramedic, and some departments required a Firefighter One Academy, which you could obtain through a local community college, such as Chabot College, which I went through. Well, I remember, you know, trying to plot out how do I become a firefighter, talk to many other people. The internet was not around yet, so I couldn't do research there, but I stopped by firehouses, talked to firefighters. And I put my own game plan together of what I thought it would take to become a firefighter. And then, of course, I was eventually looking at getting promoted in the fire service. I was also looking ahead five years, 10 years, 20 years, you know, and trying to plan out what training, what education, what certifications, what experience, you know, what do I need to have a full, I guess, package to be a great firefighter, not to mention, you know, then get promoted throughout the ranks. Well, it took me probably a number of years until I was hired and on the other side of the oral board as a Raider that it dawned on me that, wait a second, we don't promote or hire. I was at the time it was hiring, but we don't hire or promote people. We promote and hire, excuse me, stop that one around, stop that. We don't hire and promote resumes. We hire and promote people. And what I mean by that is you can spend all this time, you know, like I did, and I was guilty of that, trying to put all this stuff on my resume. And when you're on the other side of the oral board or the whatever assessment center um, event you're in, the resume is nice, don't get me wrong. It's great to see that he or she has had this class or done that job or that assignment or taken that promotion, but you still got to sell yourself. You still have to be that one that convinces those folks on the other side of the panel, which could be the fire chief making the final decision, or it could be the initial gatekeepers, you know, the, the, the Raiders that are deciding, does he or she have what it takes to be that position that they're aspiring to? And I think that's that hard part is that we have to be able to demonstrate that yeah, you got a good resume, but you know what? This doesn't really mean much of anything because if you can't communicate, you can't demonstrate that through your actions, it's not going to matter. So don't get me wrong. It's good to have certain things on your resume, meaning the things that allow you to at least take the test because in most departments, there's minimum qualifications or MQs, training, education, experience that you have to have. So obviously you got to have those to put in your resume to get in the door. And sometimes some departments say highly desirable qualifications, then maybe that makes a difference. But even then, when I see highly desirable, most of the time that's nice to have on there, but it doesn't mean anything because again, sometimes people get hired or promoted and without those highly desirable qualifications. And then someone goes, well, they didn't have, I had all the highly desirable stuff. They had nothing on that highly desirable list. Well, again, we, promote people, not resumes. So all that stuff that you did have might have been good. Maybe maybe I came across as an asshole. Maybe I came across as a jerk. Maybe I came across as someone that'd be abrasive or condescending or arrogant or whatever, hard to work with. Because again, that panel, those raiders are looking across the board at you, thinking a number of things. We've talked about these things in previous tips. You know, when I'm a Raider, I'll be a Raider for the city of San Jose for three days this next week for the battalion chief's promotional exam. You know, obviously they give me a score sheet to rate the candidates on, but I'm also going to be sitting there going, okay, I'm a battalion, excuse me, I'm rating battalion chiefs. As a deputy chief, I've been a battalion chief. I've supervised battalion chiefs. 
I'm going to be looking on the other side of the panel saying, okay, can he or she, would I like to have them work for me? Would I like to work for them? Will they be a good asset to the position of battalion chief? Or are they going to be a jerk? Are they going to be too egotistical? Is the power of the gold badge going to go, the weight of that gold badge going to go to their head and cause them to just go, go stupid, I guess, you know? I want to make sure they can be safe beginners, but they can hit the ground running. I want to make sure they're going to represent the city of San Jose where I live and the fire department who protects me and my family. I want to make sure they're going to do a good, capable, competent, effective, efficient job that's in the best interest of the citizens, best interest of their coworkers, best interest of their employers, the city of San Jose and the taxpayers like me and my wife. So Think about that. We promote people, not resumes. So don't get me wrong. It's nice to take time. And I say nice to do stuff for your resume because one of our candidates, I remember years ago, he was a firefighter for 10 years, give or take. He goes to the captain's test, his first time taking the captain's test. The only things he had on his resume were like his high school diploma. Now, mind you, he's like 30 years old. So why are you even wasting the high school diploma on there? Because it just doesn't, well, the reason he had the high school diploma on there, because he really had no college. He never went to college, which is fine. I'm not saying that's bad, but it's like, dude, you're 30 years old. You got your high school diploma on there. Okay. And the only experience he had was being a Santa Clara County firefighter for 10 years, which is good, but it's not all about experience. And the only training and education that he had on the resume was the stuff that the department put him through. The County Fire Recruit Academy 10 years ago. Oh, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. We all had to graduate that. You don't finish the academy, you don't go to probation, you don't pass go, you don't collect $200. All the certifications this guy had on his resume were the exact same certifications that, again, the department required him to do as part of his probationary process. There was nothing above and beyond to show all risk. And then, of course, when we asked him in the oral board of, so what do you plan to do training education-wise you, when you become a captain? Well, remember, a 10-year firefighter going for captain, captain, supervisor, manager, leader. Okay. What classes do you plan to take when you become a captain in your first year or two? His answer was, well, I'm probably going to take some, maybe some rescue classes, some hazardous materials classes, you know, maybe uh, take a high-rise class, you know, a ho hose management class. And the oral board, I mean, the Raiders, as I was one, we're all thinking, going, those are all firefighter classes. They're great classes, but you should have already done those. He didn't get promoted off that test, off that list, yeah, off that test. His answer should have been, well, when I get promoted to captain, I plan to step up my game and make sure I take some supervisory classes, some leadership classes, some command and control classes, some management classes, some administrative level human re human resource classes, company officer level classes. Instead, he's thinking like a firefighter. And I've talked about that in previous tips of going to your promotional exam, acting and being that position that you want, not the one that you're in, but the one that you want. So he didn't do that well. But anyway, we promote people, not resumes. So you can have a great resume and great is even subjective because a lot of people say, well, I had the best resume. Why didn't I get promoted? What's best? Most education? No. Most experience. Well, I got 40 years on the job. So what? Nothing personal. That's great. Okay. I got a master's degree. Great. I've been in the National Fire Academy. Great. So I, again, it doesn't make you better than anybody else. All of it comes down to how you sell yourself, but also your character. Character is so huge, how you demonstrate to them that you'll be a good fit for the position, which I'll talk about in a future episode. Now, if you've paid attention to some of these previous tips and or, and or seen the book, you see that I have a lot of my friends and mentors, brothers and sisters that have served as, I guess, subject matter experts to supplement what I talk about. So in this tip, uh, my brother, Larry Connolly, who's a captain with St. Louis, Missouri Fire Department, uh, on ladder 13, uh, Larry's a great dude. Got a chance to see him a couple months ago when I was in St. Louis, great guy. But he does a lot of teaching, a lot of classes at FDIC and teaches a lot of his uh, glue leadership pr principles with his brother David around the country. So check him out if you haven't done so already. Really great, solid dude with a lot of good information to share. Now, think about this. Resumes are good. Don't get me wrong. You got to submit a resume. If they, I mean, most promotional exams, they want a resume. 
but they're not the main reason someone typically gets promoted that I've touched on. You know, those that make the list and typically get promoted are the ones who demonstrate that they have the necessary KSAs to do the job, not to mention they have passion, fucking enthusiasm, brother. Maybe not to that level in the academy. I mean, when you're in the promotional process, you probably want to keep the swear words to a minimum unless it's really necessary, but I'd say probably not necessary, but also the potential, because I talked about that, the potential to succeed. Now, if you're sitting there wrapped around the, what the hell's KSA, Steve? I've, no, I've never heard that word. Well, all of us that are going for promotional exams or in supervisory positions should understand that word, word that acronym KSA. KSA stands for knowledge, skills, and abilities. Knowledge, skills, and abilities. And if you take a look at any job description for any rank in any organization, and pretty much every rank, especially governmental jobs, there's a job description or classification or specification, whatever they call it, for every rank, fire chief, deputy chief, firefighter, engineer, company officer. And in that job description is required knowledge, required skills, required abilities, maybe minimum qualifications. That's how that job announcement, when they go to make the promotional announcement, KSAs come off of that. So each rank, each position has different necessary knowledge, skills, and abilities. That's what it comes down to. That's like if you're a firefighter, say, in 30 years, on the busiest company, say, in the FDNY, in the Bronx, you fight fire 25 times a day, which I know is unrealistic. You've been there, done that, seen it all. You go, I've been a firefighter for 30 years here. I'm going to go put in for a fire chief position somewhere because you know what? I got the fire ground experience. I've seen it all. Okay, you're a firefighter. You want to make that jump all the way up to fire chief, bypassing company officer, battalion chief, and everything else in between. Now, before you laugh at me or say that would never happen, those things do happen. I've seen around the country, usually smaller departments. I mean, one station, two station departments, maybe even, you know, in just rural areas sometimes where someone goes right from firefighter to fire chief, skipping ranks. Well, a lot of times the small departments don't have a lot of ranks. It's usually only a couple ranks. Or they go from say lieutenant all the way up to fire chief. Well, the job of a firefighter and a fire chief, they're apples and oranges, cats and dogs. Even a lieutenant up to fire chief, sometimes apples and oranges. I mean, again, company level stuff, out of a firehouse, running calls, serving the public versus a fire chief who is probably not running calls in most departments, rural areas, I get it, yeah. But most fire chiefs are dealing with administrative stuff, politics, human relations stuff, not to the level that a company officer does. Fire chiefs ain't fighting fire daily. They're not dealing with strategy and tactics. They need to understand it. That's that challenge that you may think, hey, awesome firefighter, he'll make an awesome chief. And sometimes the best firefighters don't make great chief officers. Sometimes the marginal firefighters make great chief officers. No different from athletics. Look at sports. Usually the best coaches, best managers were not the best players. It's just the way it goes. Nothing personal, just different skill sets. You know, this is something I mentioned earlier that I struggle with until I learn how to play the game and how the game works. And it is a game. I'm not saying to take it lightly or to say it's a joke, or, but you got to learn how to play the game of getting promoted and what they're looking for. It's not rocket science. You know, ultimately put yourself in the shoes of the Raiders and the fire chief. Who do you, who do they want to get promoted? Hopefully not yes people, hopefully just people that are competent, capable to do the job and do it well. So that's pretty much what I got, you know, so don't get me wrong. It's good to not just meet the minimum calls, but it's also good to succeed them. Why? You know, just to demonstrate that you have an all risk perspective and you're not just trying to get by with the bare minimum, you know, don't squeak by with bare minimum, you know, don't also get cocky to think the resume gets you the promotion. It doesn't seriously, it doesn't. And don't get pissed when it doesn't or the job. So, Hey, as always, thank you very much for the gift of your time. Feel free to reach out, connect with me on social media. If there's anything I can do for you, please don't hesitate to reach out. So until the next episode, y'all be safe. Take care. We'll see you soon.